This is a demo of what's new with Alfresco Community Edition 5.1. I'm logged into Alfresco Share and I'm sitting in a test folder. I'm going to upload a few test files here, just a couple of PDFs, doesn't really matter. And if I go look at this PDF and look at the types that I could change it to, um, there are some types related to smart folders, which uh, I'll talk about in a little bit, but there are no custom types in the list. One of the new features of Alfresco 5.1 is the ability to create new types and aspects directly in the share UI. So if I go to admin tools and I go to the model manager, I can see that I have the ability to create a model or import a model. Now I've already created a model here. It's the SC model, which is from the uh, custom content types tutorial. If I click on this model, I can see that it has a type called SC doc, which is the enterprise wide shared um, parent type. And then white paper, which inherits from doc and then marketing doc which inherits from white paper. Now this model is not active. You can see it says inactive parent model. So if I want to start using this model, I can just activate it. And now if I go back to that test folder and I look at the types, Now my white paper and marketing doc are both available. Let's go ahead and make this a, let's just make it a white paper. And I don't believe I have any custom properties for this particular type, but let's go look at that next. So if I go back to my model and I look at my marketing doc, can see that it has a property called campaign. And it is a multi-valued property, a text type, and it has a list of values as a constraint. And here are the list of values. While we're here, let's also look at the layout because in Alfresco, you define the model and then you define your form configuration. And before 5.1, this required XML editing, both of those activities. Now with 5.1, there's a layout designer. So if I go into this layout designer, you can see for this particular layout, I've created a double column panel, which has sort of the default set of metadata here. And then I have below that a single column panel and that's where my campaign is sitting. Um, and if you uh, click any of these properties, you can change the form control that they use. You can say what view mode this property should be displayed in. And you can add your own custom styles, make them read only, um, make them hidden, etc. So if I were to go change one of my test documents to a marketing doc, now you can see my properties are in a two column panel and then there's a single column panel for this campaign. So I can come in and set some properties here. The last thing about the new modeling tool is if you have instances of these types, you're not going to be able to delete the model. So um, you can see if I try to 
deactivate the model, it'll tell me it can't can't be deactivated because it's being used. A nice little feature is um, this where used button. So if you don't know where all of your white papers are, you can just click find where used and it'll list them out. Not sure why there's two there, but So I could delete that and it would be, if I wanted to get rid of that model, I would have to delete all the instances of those types and remember to empty your trash can because uh, you, even if those are sitting in your trash can, um, you cannot delete the model. So remember to go into uh, my profile and then go into the trash can and empty the trash can. The next feature I want to show you that's new in Alfresco 5.1 is Smart Folders. Think about uh, anytime you've ever wanted to have a folder that's defined by a query instead of the actual structure of the folder, and that gives you some idea of what you can do with Smart Folders. I went through the Smart Folders tutorial that's in the um, Alfresco documentation site, docs.alfresco.com, and it's really helpful to understand what it is we're talking about when we talk about smart folders. So I'm not gonna go through that whole thing, but I just wanna show you a few things so you can get an idea of how this works. If I open up this folder called claims application, you can see that it's got some new folder icons that didn't exist before 5.1. So um, what you're seeing here are two actual folders, normal folders. One's called claims and one's called policies and three smart folders, claims by type, my open claims, and policy documents. So if we go into um, claims, and let's create a new, a new claim. So this would be like an insurance claim or something. I'll call it claim 245. <clears throat> now if we go open up claim 245, we can see already it has several smart folders defined. How that happened was there's a rule on this um, folder that, declare, that adds an aspect to any folder that gets added, which basically ties to a smart folder definition. So these, fol these smart folders get added automatically anytime a claim folder is created. Now I want to set some metadata on this claim folder. And I want to um, tell it that it relates to claim 245 and that this is health insurance and the status will leave it as new. Now when I save this information, if I go back out to claims, there's claim 245, but this may not be the best way for your team to look at claim folders. It might be more helpful to look at claims by type. So if I click claims by type and then click health insurance, new, here's the folder that I just created. So what you're seeing is that a query is run and is showing this folder because it's a health insurance claim and because it's a status of new. So let's add a form. I'm just going to grab a PDF and drag it in here. Now you can see that the PDF actually lives in this claim folder, but because I dragged, dragged it into forms, it knows that this is a, this is a form and if I go look at its properties, you can see that the type got set to claim form and it inherited the claim number. So that's another feature of smart folders. And if I were to go change the status of this claim, so which is on this folder, I could say, okay, this is approved for payment. 
then the folder, claims folder, now will be in a different place. So you saw earlier that uh, claims by type, health insurance was under new, and now it should be under payment approved. There it is. Next on the new feature list is the ability to set your own home page or your default page after logging in. So if I log in as a one of my test users, right now I'm going to my user dashboard. This is just like the pre-5.1 behavior. But maybe I want to always go to that smart folders document library uh, that I showed a minute ago. Maybe I always want to go here when I log in. The way you do that is you just go over here to uh, use current page. Now, if I were to log out and log back in, I go directly to the site and then uh, the document library within the site. So that's kind of a nice feature. Next is a little feature that has always, it's one of these features that you've always been able to do, but you had to write the UI action yourself. And that is the ability to revoke ownership from somebody. So let's, um, we're, we're in a test site called tuser one test site. Let's look at the members of this site. tuser one test user one is a manager, and test user two is a collaborator. Let's log out and log back in as that T user two and create a document. So I'm in the test site. Let's just create a plain text document. Okay, um, the document's been created. I can edit this document. I'm a collaborator, so I can edit any document in the site. Um, but I can delete this document as well. And the reason why is because I'm an owner. People that own documents can delete those documents. Um, but test user one may not want that to happen. Test user one may think it's okay for me to um, edit documents, but really doesn't want me to delete those documents, even if I'm the one that created them. So the fix for that is for teaser one to go to the site and click this new UI action, become owner. It's going to warn me that I may be restricting the permissions of the previous owner, which is exactly what we want to do in this case. So I've clicked OK, I'm now the owner. And if I log back in as tuser two, Now I can still edit the document, but I can't delete it. The last thing I want to talk about that's new in 5.1 is the release naming. So if we go over to the Alfresco wiki and we see the announcement that um, Alfresco community 201602GA is released. So you may realize or remember that uh, Alfresco community releases usually are a number with a letter. And um, what's going on is um, th those were hard for people to determine what was a stable release versus what was sort of an early release. And so now um, Alfresco is making that easy because they are adding this GA for stable or generally available releases and they're using EA for early releases. If you go look at the release notes, then you can see what's included in that release. So 2016-02 means it was released in February of 2016. And the specific content that's in that release is the Alfresco platform 5.1e, share 5.1e, etc. Um, so you can go look at that. And I think this is a really nice um, addition or feature that they've added to how the community is 
putting out releases. So if you're going to run Alfresco Community Edition in production, which is definitely uh, what a lot of people do, um, you want to make sure you're running the GA releases, not the EA releases. So EA is really should be considered experimental, and the GA should be considered the stable release.